and here we are, Granddad. This is where I work. As you can see here, uh, I'm getting ready to uh, do an unboxing and review of the Hasbro G.I. Joe series, Crimson Guard. Please take me back to their home. It's Butterscotch Pudding Day. Oh, hey, what's going on, you Hasbro Hasbros? It's me, Retro Michael. Retro Michael! That's right, I got a yellow lightsaber, damn it, and I escaped from hell. Who the hell is that guy? Oh, just ignore him, Granddad. It's this guy that comes around every once in a while. He thinks he's got his finger on the pulse of the action figure and toy collecting community when he really just has his finger jammed right up his ass. Yeah. Yeah. You know. You know who I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, you stupid fuck. Greetings, toy heads, and welcome to another episode of Go Figure with me, your host, Eli Williams, here on the Digitally Rebastard Network, the action figure show about news, reviews, collecting tips, customizations, kit bashing, everything that goes into this fun, nerdy hobby that you and I both love. And in this special episode, we're going to be doing an unboxing and review of the Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified series, Crimson Guard. Uh, just got this, had it on pre-order uh, from Big Bad Toy Store, just rolled in a couple days ago. I know there's been people that have already done reviews and uh, unboxings and stuff of this, but you know, this one's mine and I'm sharing it with you. So uh, let's have a look, see here at uh, the packaging. Of course, we still have the window packaging here. It's one of the last few that we'll see. Um, it's a thing now. We got to embrace it, except for the people that leave stuff in boxes. I feel sorry for them, but this is the... That's the norm now. But anyway, so we've got, uh, you can see the figure and all his accessories uh, in the window there. We've got artwork here on the side of the Crimson Guard. Um, I, I really love the artwork on these boxes because it's it's always like a different artist every box. G.I. Joe Classified Series has real logo Crimson Guard. Warning, don't put Crimson Guard in your mouth. Uh, up on top here, uh, number 50 in the line, a uh, little Cobra logo there uh, on the side artwork spanning over to the uh this side of it and then on the right side we've got the uh gi joe glyphs uh and uh 50 down here at the bottom uh so you know i don't know what these are you can get on gi joe.com but apparently uh we got ex you know specializes in skulls explosives uh honeycombs and cogwheels i don't know what any of that means but it's on gi joe.com and uh, then we have the ever-expanding collage on the back there of all the characters. I don't see Crimson Guard in that one, though. Well, Firefly's there now. Uh, or not Firefly, but uh, Barbecue. Firefly? I don't, that's a uh, something else. I don't know. Yeah, Barbecue. Barbecue's in there. Um, yeah, Spirit's in there. I don't see any of the super, super new ones. I see Al. I think that's Alley Viper. Oh, and there's Croc Master. Anyway, um, I don't know who that is. That's got the uh, snake eyes and... I don't know. That's maybe a mystery there. Anyway, Jibbery Jabbery Legal Jargon. G.I. Joe.com has a logo. More Jibbery Jabbery Legal Jargon. Uh, oh, ages 0 to 3. You know what that means. If your child is not born yet, they shouldn't play with these toys. That's right. You're welcome. And then on the bottom, we've got more Jibbery Jabbery Legal Jargon. Houses of Klingon and Barcode. And we're ready to go. Uh, let's get Trusty out. Pew! And slice into this and get him out. I've been excited for this one. This is one that I, I really wanted. I wasn't uh stupid piece of paper. Um wasn't really gonna get this one, but you know, since I got Tomax and Zaymot, I kind of figured I needed to get this one too. So uh let's get the accessories out of the tray. And this one's got some neat ones too. Really, really neat ones. Um Oh, I'll get that out. All kinds of goodies in here. Oh, man, that one's really, really, really stuck in there. Do I need to get that? I think that one's going to have to come out the back. Okay, magazine. Oh, gun magazine. 
really stuck in there. There we go. Goodness. And then we have a pistola and a backpack that's on now on the floor. And we're ready to bleh! and get him out of there. Okay, we'll put all this back together. Stupid piece of paper in here. Kind of pop that back into place and put that back in the package. And flat flap tab. And we're ready to move to the pedestal. All right, here we've got him on the pedestal and we've got all the accessories out so we can take a look here. Uh, starting off, we've got a, uh, looks like a, an M16 um, or an AR-15 and it is a little bit warped from the packaging there, uh, as you can see. Um, so I'm going to need to heat that up and kind of straighten it out, but uh, no big deal there. Um, really, really nice detail to this. I like the bayonet. By the way, to all the people that, uh, and I've seen some videos out there of people putting out, it's like, oh, G.I. Joe Classified, they don't do, you know, they don't do paint apps on weapons. Yes, they do. Some don't, some do. That goes with every line of figures. And as far as the Valiverse, yeah, there's a lot of Valiverse figures that don't have paint apps on the weapons. So, get over yourself. But, uh... At any rate, um, we've got like an AR-15 M16, um, and then we have a magazine to go with it that pops right in the bottom there. Oh, I think I've got that upside down. Or do I have that upside down? Do I have it backwards? It's not fitting in there. Oh, there we go. It snapped in. So it's got a magazine, remo removable magazine on there, and... Um, Really nice uh, detail. Got a little bit of uh, a matte finish on the bump stock back there. Then we've got a nice uh, silver paint app on the bayonet right up in the front there. And you can even see the little serrated or, or the uh, blood grooves in that bayonet as well. So, yeah, they do they do attention to detail. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we have a knife. That, oh, my gosh, look, it also has... Uh, Silver paint app on the on the blade there. I'm, I'm I'll be damned. I can't believe they did that. Um, and uh, nice serrated edge on the back there. Uh, really good looking knife. Like a nice nice solid knife there. Uh, black on the handle with a little uh, little claw there on the pommel. Uh, but uh, really good looking knife. And then we have a pistol. No, this one doesn't have any paint apps on it. Uh, but it's just a black pistol. You know some. Guns are all the same color. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we've got that there. Um, just well detailed, nice uh, knurled, uh, knurled uh, sculpt there on the handle. Um, sort of, it looks like a 9mm, maybe a Glock. I don't know, Glock or a Smith & Wesson. And uh, then we have a backpack, um, which has a post on it that I don't know if that is for... I don't know if that's for the rifle. I'm not sure what is meant to go on on that backpack. I guess it I guess you could put the I don't know. I don't know what's supposed to go on that. But uh then there's a hole on this side too. Um but it's got a little silver uh paint app cobra logo on there. Um, it's a pretty unique backpack. I don't think, uh, it's got like a little handle here on the bottom. I feel like this maybe opens up or does it open up? I don't know. It's very thick and heavy. It feels like there might be something inside, but I don't see a place that opens up. It has some type of little handle thing here on the bottom. But yeah, um, it's really well detailed. Um, nice, uh ribbed down the middle of the section there, little buckles down the sides of it. Very, very cool. Then we have a saber and a scabbard. Oh, look, more paint apps on weapons. Wow, and a glossy finish on the handle. <clears throat> yeah, you people know who you are. And uh, then we have uh, a scabbard here to go with it. Really nice blood groove down, all the way down the middle section of that blade. And uh, then we have the scabbard that that goes in. Oh, I just think it goes this way. Yeah, it fits right in there really nice. Doesn't fall out. It's got a little notch on it that I believe goes on his belt. Yeah, he's got a little notch on, his, on the uh, left side of his belt there. 
But uh, yeah, really cool. This is also a little bit warped from the packaging, which I'll I'll have to bend that, uh, heat it up, and bend that into place. But it's pretty almost bent bent into place right now. But yeah, that sword goes right into the scabbard, and then there we have the Crimson Guard himself. Uh, really cool looking guy there. Uh, let's grab the ruler and measure him up. He stands at uh, pretty much right at six and a half inches tall. Uh, well, but, uh, slightly less, but more over six and a quarter inches tall, but uh, definitely right right underneath six and a half. Um, taking a look at him, really, really like this sculpt. Oh man, he looks really good. They they did come out with a retro carded version of this, but it's really not that different, so I'm not going to worry about it. I got this one. I'm happy with it. Um yeah, I'm not going to worry about picking up the retro carded one um because there really isn't that much difference. Kind of like the retro carded snake eyes that they did. There's not much difference in that either. Although there's a chance that I might get that someday because not snake eyes, storm shadow. Uh, so I was, I don't know why I get those two names confused, you know, after all these years, you'd think I would know who's who, but, uh, yeah, really nice sculpt work, nice paint apps. I love the silver pops against the red. Um, nice, uh, he heads all one piece. I thought the helmet might come off like the helmet part, like the Cobra officers, but no, um, very regal looking, uh, looking dude here. Um, we have a, looks like a you know, separate piece, rubberized belt with the uh, knife scabbard, and then we've got a secondary piece on the left leg, a rubberized uh, holster for the pistol. And uh, I still don't know what the, uh, what the pegs are, or the peg holes and stuff are on the backpack, but maybe we'll find that out. Um, or if you know, drop a comment down there. And uh, going down to the legs, we've got uh, boots, nice glossy finish on the boots, little silver paint apps on the buckles on the boots look really good. I like the silver uh, silver rings around the wrists there. Got a little silver Cobra Crimson Guard logo on the, uh, and then we've got some medals here. Like this guy's seen some action. He's got like a silver, uh, silver emblem like with an eagle on it or something there on his chest and like some kind of rank. Um, and then little silver uh, platelets all around the, the edge there, holding that um, holding that front onto the jacket. Little gray uh, gray ropes around the uh, I can't remember the official name of those things, but ropes around the right arm and uh, little uh, little th uh, br uh, gray things there on the shoulder. Uh, black gloves, black leathery gloves, really, really nice. Got oh, look at that! Silver paint apps going down the 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 left leg and the right leg uh, on there. Really, really nice looking figure. So, like going over articulation, um, head is on a looks like a neck post. Uh, I don't know if we can pop that off. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that's a neck going down into the body with a ball joint and then a dumbbell at the top of the neck going into the head, um, giving us uh, not a lot of down, a little bit of up um, because of the way that helmet hits the collar of the shirt. So uh, pretty decent tilt, but the head does go all the way around. Um, but, you know, not much movement forward or back on that. Arms out to uh, there. So straight out and uh, all the way around. We do have a bicep swivel with a double elbow, but it doesn't go too much past there because of the bicep. And then down to the wrist where we've got a wrist swivel all the way around and a up and down uh, gun hand on the left. Do we have an up and down gun hand on the right? Well, he's, he wields a sword, so I'm going to imagine that this one is also up and down. Uh, and it is up and down. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, I've got a hinge mid-torso, a uh, standard H hinge on the uh, mid-torso there. Uh, going down to, we do have a ball joint at the waist for some waist swivel and a little hula hoop action um, going on there. But uh, we've got nice ab crunch all the way back, all the way forward, so that's cool. Um, drop down ball joint. Oh, drop down ball joint on the hips. Nice, nice, nice. 
uh, going in there. And then we have a thigh swivel uh, there on the leg with a double knee going all the way back. Nice, nice. Like it, like it, like it. Uh, down to, let's put that holster thing back on his leg. Get on there. Uh, going down to the boots where we do have a boot swivel uh, on there as well. And then uh, detents on the feet. A um, little tight there on that one. But yeah, detents on the feet and a forward rocker. Um, yeah, they're a little tight on the feet. Just need loosened up a little bit. But uh, yeah, I like the drop down ball joints on uh, on the hips there. Let's put his uh, let's put all his stuff on him. Um, let's put the sword goes into a little notch there on the side of the belt, and then the pistol goes in the holster underneath that, and it fits in there just nicely. Uh, the knife goes in the scabbard over on this side. So we got the knife there and then putting the backpack on. I still don't know what those that notch is for, but uh, we'll put the uh, rifle in his hand. And uh, trigger finger does go right in there. Super nice. We'll get that uh, arm up and uh, get him. There we go. There we go. All right. Move him back just a tad. Oh, I can't move him back. The sword's keeping him forward. But anyway. So there we go. Um, really nice figure. Let's pull him off of there and line him up with some other characters and see how he scales up. Okay, here we have him with the Hasbro Star Wars, the Black Series Imperial Stormtrooper. The Hasbro Marvel Legends Series Retro Armored Daredevil, the Hasbro Ghostbusters Plasma Series Egon Spengler, and the Mattel DC Multiverse Dark Knight Returns Batman. Um, all in all, I'm I'm pretty happy with him. You know, he's uh not not as nice as some of the others, but he's you know he's not trash. He's he's you know good if you if you're into army builders, this is definitely one you'd want to go with i don't really do that but i just get one and uh so you know he'll look good up on my gi joe shelf with all my joes and uh nice to have a new addition to uh the community because i haven't done um i haven't I think the last gi joe i got was just the retro card of destro so this is a nice new fresh figure that will uh be up there on the shelf with the other guys i'll put him in between uh tomax and zamot since uh they they are the crimson guard commanders and all that good stuff. So anyway, that'll do it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Curse smash that bell so you can get information on all the good things coming out of the Digitally Rebastard Network. You all have a great week and a great day. I'll see you next time. And until then, don't forget to get your figure on. Take care.